Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to study a topic in the paper three, Coordinator, the third semester. The topic of this video lecture is the retrogressive metamorphosis in tadpole larva of Herdman. That is the topic that we are going to discuss now. So this is the topic, the progressive metamorphosis in third menu, let us move on. So before starting with the exact process of uh, the progressive metamorphosis, let us have a brief recap on what we discussed in the previous session. As we all know, uh, in the section of Herdmania, there is indirect development. Indirect development means there is a larval form which develops into adult. The larval form is known as tadpole larva. As we all know, the structure of the tadpole larva, there is head front, head or front, and then there is a uh, tail. The head region has adhesive papillation, cerebral, cerebral cone, and the alimentary canal in the uh, larval form it is very rudimentary we need to know these details because there are some additional structures that appear and there are some structures that disappear in the larval form during the metamorphosis so uh, the pharynx has endostyle stigmata the pharynx opens out to at the aperture tail is very long and uh, this tail has motocord and nerve coordinate and all these structures are present in the active larval form and this active larval form undergoes the progressive metamorphosis that means many cordic structures degenerate in the larval form to make it a sedentary adult let us see these changes okay so in the retrogressive metamorphosis of herdman tadpole there is transformation of an active free swimming larva into a degenerate sedentary adult. That is the reason we are calling this process as the progressive metamorphosis. Okay. Now we need to understand this in, in, uh, in this video lecture. We need to understand which are the progressive changes and which are the retrogressive changes. Majorly, the major uh, changes are the retrogressive kind. Now, the larva consists of some advanced characters which are not there in the adult. These advanced characters are presence of the motocord, presence of the neural tube, and presence of the larval sense organs. So these structures are present in larval form. But these structures disappear in case of the adult. This is the reason majorly why we are calling it as the progressive metamorphosis. Now, so why is this uh, larval form, simple larval form is becoming uh, uh, active, larval form is becoming the sedentary adult. The reason is the adult of Herdmania has a sedentary mode of life. For a sedentary mode of life, organism requires a simple kind of organization. Okay, so that is the reason maybe to have the progressive changes in case of the larval form. Now, when we look at the metamorphosis in case of Herdmania, there are both the progressive and progressive changes. So let us look at them one by one. Now, in this picture, you can see here this is the uh, adult of a CDN, this is the larva. There is transition, and you can see the larval form has a vertebrate ancestral form so which is going to um, get repeated in its uh, embryonic development and later on it uh, develops into a sedentary adult now in this picture if you see uh, in the aquatic just all the cdns are exclusively marine forms in the water body so this is how once the fertilization occurs as we all know well external fertilization is there 
zygote is formed and this zygote um, undergoes cleavage forming the larva, tadpole larva. This tadpole larva swims and it is positively geotrophic and uh, negatively phototrophic. It moves to the uh, bottom level where there is a substratum and some some attaches to it and during which there are retrogressive changes and also some progressive changes in making it a sedentary adult. Okay, so we shall move on. Now, which are those retrogressive changes? Now, first one we need to understand in the retrogressive metamorphosis, there is destruction of the larval tissue, the larva, whichever larval tissues that are present, they have to get disappeared, degenerated. Which are those structures? Number one, the caudal muscles. The caudal muscles, now cord and not a cord. All these were present in the larval form and these start breaking down and they disappear. The broken down tissue will be eaten up by the phagocytes that are present. And we all know students that the head region, there were adhesive papillae present in case of the larva and these adhesive papillae also disappear in the larval form during the progressive metamorphosis. And the larval sense organ, do you remember? The larva is an active swimming organism and it has all the sense organs, larval sense organs, like uh, we discussed in the previous session, presence of oscilli, which are photoreceptors, dotoses for balancing these larval sense organs and also the sensory vesicle containing these sense organs disappear again in the larval form. And not only that, so if you remember the structure of the larva, so the amount which is present uh, and between the mouth and the adhesive papillae, there is enlargement or enormous growth which shifts the mouth by 90 degrees. Okay, so and there is also stoppage in the region of the atrio pore. So the mouth shifts itself by 90 degrees. And you can see this here. So here you can see the, um, the mouth getting shifted itself. Uh, by 90 degrees during the metamorphosis. Now, we shall see this in the next picture. So, let us see here. Now, you see the larval form, once it gets attached to the substratum, the tail starts getting degenerated, as we have seen, not a pod now, pods start disappearing, and the sensory vesicle that you have seen in this area, that is also uh, getting degenerated and the mouth to so this part mouth and here there were adhesive papillae there is enormous growth in this region so that the mouth gets shifted here by uh, 90 degrees okay so that is what uh, we are talking in the uh, previous uh, slide last point and you can see the the um, pharynx region which is tending to form the branchial aperture and the pharynx getting enlarged to form the stigmata. You see there were only six stigmata present here. The stigmata started multiplying. There is enlargement of the pharyngeal region having more number of stigmata. Okay. And you can also see the in order to attach the adult to the substratum, there is formation of what are known as ectodermal ampullae. The body uh, test gets enlarged itself, forming the lobes to have ectodermal ampullae. These ampullae attach the growing adult to the substratum formed. Okay. So, uh, and you can also see due to the enormous growth for the mouth getting shifted by. 90 degrees here. This is the second view. Okay, so let us move to the next slide and see how these changes occur. So, apart from the retrogressive changes, till now we have discussed regarding the disappearance of the major structures that are present in active larva. Now we shall see 
what are the some progressing changes that appear in the medal first of all the trunk becomes pear shaped and you see as we have seen in the previous uh, slide the ectodermal antlers grow out from four corners which helps in attaching the adult to the substratum during metamorphosis now apart from attaching the adult to the substratum the ectodermal antlers also help in respiration during the metamorphosis because there is continuous circulation of fluid through the ampullae which help in respiration apart from that the in the adult there is formation of the neural gland and now ganglion formed by the neural tube and the trunk ganglion come to lie mid dorsally between the mouth and the ostium port the trunk ganglion itself possesses as a trunk vertebral now now coming to the mouth uh, uh, in the larval form we have seen the digestive system is uh, degenerate now here it started enlarging and becomes functional the adult start feeding to the ciliary water current that enters through the branchial aperture or inferent uh, siphon and enters through the uh, pharynx stigmata and there is filter feeding mechanism to the after this the water moves out through the atrial aperture now in this picture also you can see different structures that are present in the larval form now called notochord and the sensory vesicle and the papillae all these structures are present in the larval form but all of them disappear in the adult you can see this is the sedentary adult so a good picture showing the transformation of the larval form into adult and you can see the degeneration of the tail to make a sedentary adult it's a motile adult now a motile larval form and this has become sedentary adult okay So apart from that, there is enlargement of the pharynx. As I told you, the pharynx enlargement leads to the increase in the number of stigmata, and this forms a branchial sac. And also, there is enlargement. Uh, so the digestive system of degenerate there in the larval form. I said it started enlarging here, intestine is formed, and uh, due to the enlargement, it starts getting curved to get accommodated in the small area, and liver also. Start developing. Now, heart gets surrounded by pericardium here, and the adults start developing gonads and gonoducts. These are the four progressive changes that we see in case of the adult. In tunic or chest, which was already present, it starts covering the entire body and also the foot region attaches formally to the substratum. So during metamorphosis, there is extensive degradation of protein because the many larval tissues have been lost here, and there is rapid synthesis of new protein. So in order to uh, remove or degenerate the uh, larval structures like notochord, nerve cord, papillae, sensory vesicle, all these things, there is extensive degradation of the proteins, and for formation of the new structures like enlargement of the digestive system, enlargement of the Pharynx from the branchial sac, formation of the uh, adult neural sac. So all these structures they have been formed through a rapid protein synthesis. Okay, with these few progressive changes and the enormous uh, progressive changes, the motile larval form of third man, that is tadpole, becomes a sedentary adult. Okay, so. A brief summary of what we have discussed in this video is: so, first of all, why do we call it as a retrogressive change? We call it as retrogressive change because an active free-swimming adult becomes sedentary, active free-swimming larval form, larval form becomes sedentary adult. That's the reason we are calling it as retrogressive uh, change and. There is majorly 
complete the disappearance of the tail region, adhesive papillae, you know, that are now called. Progressive changes are like enlargement of the gut region, pharynx, and pericardium surrounding the uh, heart, and formation of the gonads and gonads. These progressive changes also we can see from a sedentary heart. Okay. So, with these three points, let us move on to two MCQs that we we'll see in this video. So the first question is the metamorphosis in cardamom is unique because of number one, an active free swimming larva becomes a free swimming adult. Is that correct? Second point, an active free swimming larva undergoes degenerative changes, and some larval structure becomes more elaborate to form a sedentary adult. So what is correct with respect to the progressive metamorphosis? In Hermania, there is only a second point. So, during metamorphosis in Hermania, that goal, the tail and adhesive papillae disappear. Is it correct? There is transformation of branchial sac. Uh, there is, sorry, there is formation of uh, branchial sac. Molecular changes like both degradation and formation of protein take place. So which among them is correct? Which statement is correct? Try to answer. And what is the answer? Answer is all the three statements are true. So another type of question you can see here. There's an assertion saying during larval development in hydrogen, yeah, there is a progressive metamorphosis. Yes, it is correct. The reason is the adult cardamania is degenerate and leads a sedentary mode of life. So we have because of this, this one is happening. Is it correct? What is your answer? Both assertion and reason are wrong. Is it correct? No. The reason is correct and it is the right explanation of the assertion. Is it correct? Just think it over. Let us see the right answer. That is the right answer. Correct. Right? So other two options you can just go through them. These are the references. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.